The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here at noon till 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 877-927-6648. I'd love to take your calls. First off, let me just say that the, uh, the meetup tonight for the Boston Investors Group and the Investors Business Daily um, crowd from that uh, meets over at MIT, that was going to schedule for this evening. It was going to be a uh, potluck uh, with at 6.30 and a meet and greet uh, for people to make some kind of contacts. And then at 7.30, I was going to be the guest speaker. It had to be postponed. I'm, it's still snowing outside right now. It's where I am. It's been mixed all over, over, all over the greater Boston area. Some people just had rain. Some people had eight or ten inches of snow yesterday and then having a repeat performance today. So it was decided to make it. A week from tonight, so Tuesday week, uh, I'll fill you in on the information. I think the timing of this is going to be great because we're, we're in the in the throes of starting at least a cons. I'm just calling it for now a consolidation. Uh, the speed with which we've come down, and the speed with which all of a sudden last night suddenly everybody was talking about how bearish things are. Um, suddenly, the VIX, the volatility index, which is ho hum, couldn't care less. Uh, the X, there it is, uh, trading uh, three days ago, four days ago in the 11 and a half area. Doo -doo -doo -doo, then it bounces to 12. No big deal. Suddenly today it pops up to 17.99, just misses around number 18. Um, that kind of speed just says to me, you know what? I think a chunk of the move down has already been accomplished. And uh, we've set this, we've set the seeds, and I'm going to go through that in great detail now. Let me just run the numbers quickly. Volatility index at 16.57, up a dollar 66, hit 17.99. If it closes today under 16.10, I'd say 15.90. It says, okay, be ready for a counter trend bounce, just a bounce, because I think that we have made some kind of a top. Um, so let's just deal with it that way. Let's go through the numbers now. INDU, this is the Dow trading at. Down 382 at 27,400. Made a low today of 27,325. Where does it take it to? It takes you to this gray dash line, the 50 period exponential moving average. I had said some time ago that I couldn't believe that with this cup formation right here, that at some point, if we took out the low of uh, this. 27.675 level, there couldn't be a move that at least falls in some of the gaps. Well, here's this gap right here, the gap of the 4th of November. The, the low is 27.402. The day before, the high is 27.347. What's today's low? 27.325. So we've at least done something there. Uh, the, next, the next level of support Will be the breakout, the breakout of the high of the 1st of November of 27,347. So that tells us that the low today has already taken out that particular level right there. Therefore, um, a chunk of the work has been done, at least in the very near term. So if you've had fantastic profits, if you um, uh, if you're able to get a, a puts or whatever it is on the short side. You know, it's it's not a bad idea to just take a little bit off right now. Just, you know, money management. I do think we're going to be going low. We're going to try to fill the gap, maybe get to 27,600, roll over, make the H pattern, and then start doing some testing on the 27,300s. The weekly chart, I'm going to be here. I There's a chance I might have to change this to a leg F slash B. In fact, I'm going to do it right now so that you're prepared to say um, there could be a deeper pullback. I just don't know yet, so I'm putting it in as a caution. Why? Because you hit this a Chapman Wave Inside Track weekly resistance level exactly and turned down. Now you're holding the 27,267 uh, black 14 period exponential moving average. The MACD's only just turned down, it hasn't crossed negative, and the stochastic's still at 92%. There is still internal strength. Don't think that this is going to be easy. I just don't think so. 
Okay, let's go to the S&P. S&P right now, same thing, daily um, sell mode. It's trading at uh, 3,081. The low today is 3,070. The high was 3,3154.26 just four days ago. The E-mini, let me go to the continuous contract. The E-mini made a new high yesterday. It made a new high of 3,158. Is that a round number? Yeah, 31. 3,158 round number high. I discussed this when I sent out my, my daily newsletter and I always show the E-mini in different, uh, in the daily, weekly and the 120 minute chart to show and saying, no, let me show you right now what I did, ESZ19. Uh, let's go to, so that's an A right there. And here's the 120 minute chart. And this is what I said. I think that we've made some kind of a short term top. 3158, you've got this rectangle formation, 3155 round number high was right there around about the uh, 5 o'clock-ish on the uh, 27th of November, pulls back and then pops up and on the uh, 2nd of uh, December, uh, yesterday at the open, what does it do? It has an early morning rally and then it fails and then it tries to rally again and fails and it goes straight from a peak F, 3158 to today's low in the E-mini, which is 3,069.50. This is in leg C to the downside uh, in the 120 minute chart. So you can see that rectangle pattern, boom, you come down off the rectangle pattern at a high. Usually you start to come back uh, quite sharply. Let me just get rid of that call right like there. Okay, then you have something else. Within this context, you've got the QQQ, one, two, three, there we go. Gaps down, has 206.05 as a high on the 27th, just uh, four sessions ago. And kaboom, 199.23 is the low this morning. Very, look, the MACD is negative, stochastics under 80% at 72%. The price is way under the 14 period moving average. It hasn't got to the uh, 50 period moving average right here on the left side, this daily, around about 197. So that's like kind of a target for me on the, on the short term. But it just almost touched the weekly nine period green, nine period, nine period moving average. And you've got the MACD still good and stochastics at 93%. Now, one of the reasons we went short yesterday, the Dow, we already short the SMHs uh, for over a week, uh, about a week, I think, from the uh, 25th. Um, one of the reasons is there were, there were numerous patterns. There was a Chapman wave, stalk leg formation. There's the body. Look, this is the stalk. There's the leg. There's the body. There's the neck. And there's the beak. If the beak goes below the oval body, and closes below that, that's negative. At some point, you can get a rally that's a really sharp rally after the beak. So leg, body, neck, and beak. So we went short right over there, uh, been short a little bit, and uh, now it's at 128.33. We started shorting at 133.22. I, will this work? Well, we've got the dreaded H pattern. What does that mean? You come down in an H, lowercase H pattern, test the left side, 130.50 low, and you just snap right through today. Um, the weekly chart, I drew that overlay, not because of the stalker information, because this pattern can very, if it's very short, you know, it's just five bars it could very easily become an arch formation, and that's what we're looking at, but it's only peak C in the monthly chart. I'll be back, there's a lot more to discuss, I had a ton of questions. Just remember, no meetup tonight at MIT, it's going to be postponed for a week. Next week we'll do the IBD and the uh, BIG um, Investors, Boston Investors Group uh, meetup, this is a potluck, and potluck before 6.30 and then 7.30, I give the, the talk. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. Dow's down, what are we, down 390. S&P's down 33. All right, so I just wanted to finish up here. The reason why I was focused on the semiconductor index, and you can see that that peak G, unusual peak G, although it turns out that the Dow, the uh, QQQ, and the IWM, I believe I must check it out, all made peak Gs in the Chapman Wave methodology. We had a Chapman Wave three-bar reversal starting on the 15th of November, and uh, that was really interesting to see what happened. Because it pulled back sharply to one from 130, the high was 135.26, pulls back to 130.60, bounces up, gets to just over 134, and then starts tumbling down. So the reason why I focused on this is because the IWM, sorry, the SMHs, the S SMHs, the uh, semiconductor Van Eck uh, vectors e ETF. For the semiconductors, um, it has all the stocks that are really important, and this is the this is the index that's led us up and has led us down for years now. And it seemed to me it was getting toppy. It seemed to me that we were also ready for some kind of a pullback. Let me just check here in the Chapman Wave automated. Uh, remember how I discussed all that? I went. I spent almost a, a whole segment on the resistance levels. That's the reason why I was becoming so cautious. And now I'm becoming a little bit more optimistic just intraday that there could be a bit of a bounce. A lot of selling has been taking place. Anybody with a wanted to sell would have done so by now. Now the buyers are going to come in. How does it last? That's going to be the issue. So the SMHs, we're talking about, yep, 130.66 was the resistance. It went right through that, 128.20. Um, is next. We've already been through that to 127.92. Ah, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be tough. I think that the same are going to take a bit of a breather here, and that's going to be important. Um, uh, if you look at the Dow, INDU, where's the support? Well, there's no real support uh, at this point. Mm, we went right through 27,484. That'll now become. Uh, some kind of, uh, if we can get there, that'll be some kind of resistance. And um, S&P, SC, SMEX, uh, nothing there on the downside. So th th there's still more to go on the downside until such time as we start to see them show up. QQQ, uh, nothing. But the IWM does have at 160, I believe, 
I'm sorry, 157 to 156. Uh, it's trading at 159.17 right now. All right, let's see what happens. Now, just quickly, I want to go through this because I did say when I started the show that I thought there could be some kind of a counter trend balance. Yep, you're seeing something here. This is the uh, 10 minute made a peak D. Remember how important the peak Ds are on the Chapman methodology? Right there, the high was, I think, 31.21.75. And we slumped down to 3,069. Gosh, what a, I mean, that. <laughs> 60 points, so 50 points. All right, so now we're looking at a rectangle formation, and if we can get you 3088 to 392, 2092, I would say then you could start to get some kind of a uh, some kind of a rebound uh, that has some kind of legs that goes into the close rather than selling off into the close. Okay, now we have to go through a couple of things here. So the the TLT. Yesterday, I said, and I had I, a lot of comments came in saying, oh, I, 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 what, what do we do about the bonds? And I said, you know what? We're just in a trading band. And if you look at my chart that showed, oh, maybe I should show it because it was so important yesterday. Maybe it's just as important today. And I said that in this uh, mirror image, here we go, uh, in this particular series of, of charts where we're looking at the 30-year, the 10-year, and the 5-year yields, You've got to consider, here we go, that we're in a trading band. And that trading band is between 2.443, 24.43 in the upside in the 30 year, and um, probably 2. Point, uh, what did I say? I think I said 1.98 on the downside, something like that. And there we are. So it looked uh, like, oh my God, we're going to bounce. And all of a sudden, here we are. We're back down at a lower low than yesterday. So that's what's important. But look at wood, the iShares Global and Timber Forestry. This tells me you've got to be careful here. This is the Global uh, Timber and Forestry ETF, and it's, it, it had a really good rebound, but within a rectangle. Couldn't break out. Two arch formations, lowercase m. And now it's starting to pull back. And the home builders went to a peak E, the HGX, Philadelphia Housing Index, at 362.82 in the weekly chart. I think that's going to pull back. So this, and not only that, let me go through a couple of things. That, the reasons why I want you to become somewhat negative, uh, close workspace, save, yes to all, there we go, is because of this. Look, CTAS, Sintas, I said something's not right with this picture. Uh, it goes, goes to an all-time high, 277.01, the week of the 1st of November, uh, peak G in the Chapman Wave methodology on the 31st of October. And then what happens? Um, Sintas, corporate, uh, corporation, overalls, uniforms, rentals. Yeah, I, I, I'm still calling it only a peak a, a B in the monthly, but it's telling me that there's some kind of rotational correction going on somewhere because if overalls and uniforms are seeing a slowdown, and the earnings couldn't have been all that great. Uh, you just got to think, well, uh, a little mini recession in, in a pocket of the area, one of the areas. So just be somewhat careful. Uh, look at this. My cash index, uh, Syntas is for C. Amazon is for A. Look at this. Amazon is down 25 at 17.56. Peak D in the daily, pulling back. Peak E in the monthly, uh, sorry, in the weekly at 20, 35.80. Week of the 12th of July. All-time high of 2050.50, uh, September of 2018, slumps to 1307. Now it's just going sideways. This should be the best time. I think it's getting a lot of competition uh, from many of the others. Uh, how about SPY? SPY went to an all-time high uh, on the 27th at 3115.48 peak G again. And uh, now it's on the daily is in a sell mode. The weekly chart is still very good. I'm still going to call it for now. Um, I'm just calling it, this is still a weekly, still a positive weekly. Let's see what happens. If it closes under 303 at any point in the next three weeks, that's a problem. All right. Now we've got, uh, so that's SPY and Home Depot is the one that makes up the H in cash, cash index. Plummets, 376 at 213. Wow. Uh, wasn't it at uh, 239.31? Uh, this is 30 points. I, I would say that's a, that's quite a pullback here in just a very brief time. Dreaded H pattern goes to a lowercase uh, right uh, a leg down. Yeah, B under right on the 200 period moving average under the pink nine period moving average weekly charts under the support level. This is just saying to me, be careful. Just be very careful. 
uh, we need some kind of a consolidation, and we're starting to get it. Um, so I've covered that. Oh, crude oil. Crude oil, look at this crude oil chart. Peak F. Excuse me. <clears throat> Peak F on the daily chart <clears throat> at 58.74 in the continuous contract. Big ugly candle three days ago. Stuck in this little sideways move. <clears throat> Weekly charts in now. I'm just stuck in a range between 58 and 52. Ho oh, hum, that's where I am. I'm comfortable. I'm not going anywhere. That's where I am. Okay, now we're going to get to answering your questions. And um, once again, no meetup tonight for those of you who are interested in coming. Uh, it'll be a postponed for a week. It'll be next week, the 10th of December at 6.30 at MIT. I'm not sure if it's the same room, but I'll give you all that information in the next video. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Uh, so a couple of things here. I want to look at. Um, so I had a question yesterday. Hector had called. I just couldn't find the question. I knew Hector had asked me a question uh, a couple of days ago. And I remember saying to myself, I don't have to answer it right away because it's not going anywhere. Uh, but that still didn't mean I didn't want to answer the question I was just saying about. And then I remember what the stock was. And then he sent me a note saying Teva Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Teva trading at 10.25 down a penny, only a penny. So some of these biotechs have held really well. A question in the den I'll get to in a moment about the IBB. Um, so Teva trading 
look, look at this pattern. It makes a doji candle at a peak F in the Chapman Wave, but it also has a chance of an instant restart. Well, you've taken too much time. You know my rule, 136, with a second, one, two, three, four, five. I, I don't see how it's going to break above 11 right now. Was that the height? It was 1099? No, it was 1099 was the high on the 25th. It's going to have to see something spectacular to suddenly break into the 11s at this point with a little bit more sideways consolidation. Hector, if you're long, I still like the weekly. The weekly's in a buy mode. It's gone to a peak. D. It's resting now. It's that monthly chart that's a real worry when you get a buy attack with a very ugly monthly chart. You just never know when it's going to try to test uh, the previous low again. So all I'm going to say to you is I, I can't remember exactly uh, whether you were long or whether you were looking for an entry point. I always grab the outer limits of the candles and I drew a rectangle if that's what the price portends. And that's exactly what it does. It says, hey, I'm stuck in a range. So that's the big old outlook. But I try to narrow the rectangle down as much as I can. I say, okay, my border would be not the outer limit of 10.99. I want to come back where it showed a lot of resistance, not even at the 200 period moving average of 10.89, 10.69. 10, is that an eight or a nine? 69. And the low here, I'm going to go to this low. Normally, I would actually, now I'm going to go to this low right here. And this is the low that I'm looking at. So on a near-term basis, 981 is the low, and 1060 is the high. So within that context, if you're, I would love for this to pull back a little bit more, break the rectangle, Make a dreaded H pattern, lowercase H, C down, and then you arch over, you take out that left side low, and try to get into this area of the 940, 950 to 945-ish, 940, somewhere in there. And if the technicals in the weekly are still holding well, that would be a great time to start at least looking to enter if that's your fresh position. If you're in it and you want to save, um, and you just say, you know, I, What's happening next? All I can say is that it looks to me like it's digesting huge gains. I mean, when you're talking about going from just about six to just about 11, um, you know, this is that that is a very big gain, and you know, this is a it's almost a double. So you've got to expect some kind of consolidation. The fact that it couldn't continue up after the big red candle followed by a nice green candle, and then it stalls without getting to the 200 period moving average, just says to me on a quick trade, yeah. I'd say nibble right here, quick trade, and if it starts to get towards 10.50, raise your stop and just treat it as one day at a time. But I'm thinking that the weekly chart, peak D, and good technical says, just needs a little bit more of a pullback, maybe another week in time. So a new position for a more intermediate term buy, I think I would hold off. I just, just risk reward in this market. I just say it's acting very well on a short-term basis. The weekly chart is improved, but at peak D, you always know some, something can happen. So I'm just going to say to you, if you're looking at this, because <laughs> you've done your homework and you really like it, then I'm going to say, okay, the nibble here at 10.23, but you do have to have 9.64. For me, that on a short-term basis, that would just be too big, too big a stop to have. I would say <clears throat> nibble here, if you can get a bounce, just deal with it and just don't, that's all you're doing. You're nibbling it here and you're going to say the low is, I'm out if it goes, today's low is 993, 991, 991 and I'm out. I just say do that and get a feel for what's happening because it could go from an H to an M, lowercase a, M pattern, another arch, and then it could have a quick dip to the downside. And it's at that point, does the MACD and everything in the weekly chart suggest? No, we're making a turn that the monthly chart is even acknowledging, but it's still this December, so it's just early in this month. Um, so that's the way to do it. So that's the question. I, I'm trying to cover it both ways. And the only thing I can say, if you are in lower down, you just want to know what to do to protect yourself. I would say, I like the position. I would try to hold it. Um, if you're a little bit nervous, just take a little bit off. Take a little bit off, and that so saves you from putting in a crazy stop as you get taken out lower, then you've lost that position, and uh, now you don't know what to do in your more core position. Take a little bit off here, and then let's deal with it. Let's talk about it again in the next two days. It is an important stock. It's acting pretty well. Whew.
That's Tampa. Next question I had, IBB. IBB is trading right in any calls now. And this time I did check. So we made a peak D in the IBB. <clears throat> had a Chapman Reef 2 bar reversal, which says that if one of the key moving averages down below gets taken out, this could become a deeper uh, decline, and that's at 117.28, and it's trading right now at 118.95. Had a low today of 117.43, really nice action, and um, the MACD is still very strong. The stochastics at 94% on balance volume is good. I think this is the area that's holding very well. Unlike the, 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 the techs themselves, the techs are really under pressure. So let me just say, don't... Um, what is the question that you're in it? Do you envision IBB making a new high within one year? Yes, I do. 122.97 is the um, high of uh, all-time high in December of 2018, and then it slumped in the 18. A year later, it goes to 89.01, 40 points. I mean, the third gets cut in half, or well, gets cut down by a third, and then raised from 89 to the high of uh, almost 120. What was 120.05 on the 29th? I think so. I think that whole aspect of of um, the uh, politicians and healthcare. It's becoming a little bit more fuzzy, which fuzzy is what the healthcare se sector likes. They don't want specific targeting, and right now it's a little fuzzy. I do think I, I've got a leg A in the in the weekly chart. I would have thought that it would pull back more, but it's holding well. I do think that's a leg B, and I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to a C and a D. So January, February is where I'd start to see IBB maybe making some kind of a top. Um, I hope that answers your question. Next question I had was. Um, Oh, there we are. Okay. So GT wants to know about Boeing. Oh, he's just mentioning Boeing is down. Yeah, Boeing, you know, woo. Boeing was trading at 375 the other day. It's at 349, down 10 percent. It's not a big deal. It's down six to 349. But I do think that the, everyone's talking about this as if to say um, Boeing's going to get it right. Oh, I have to tell you, to get it right, they're going to either rename the plane. They have to go through a whole process. You're going to have to have at least a couple of months of really notables, like the CEO of Boeing, like the CEO of uh, like maybe a General Electric. You've got to get really big names flying in the craft to say, hey, it's way better. Everything's improved. Everything's good. Boeing's back to its old wonderful self. Ah, that's going to take a lot. And that'll be close to the time when the hearings will start, surely. All right. Dow's down 3.62. Nice little bounce off the low. And the SB's down 30. I'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. Uh, so let's go to questions I had here was... Um, the, the wheat, remember a week we looked at yesterday, made a peak C, a very sharp pullback here, down eight and a half and five to six and three quarters. And yes, with the dollar coming down, uh, soybean, soybean even making a lower low yesterday and another low with a big red candle. I said, don't take out the low of yesterday when it's trading at one and a half up at 8.72. We'll watch this real closely because the low yesterday and the continuous contract was right there, um, 8.67 and a half. Don't take out 867. That's going to be really, that, that's an lowercase h pattern oh, in the weekly chart. And Khan, Khan is trading, oh, not bad, up a half at 382 and a half. So it's come off the low, but it doesn't look great. It's just better than the others. Um, okay, now the, the next thing I want you to do is KC. Uh, KC is um, coffee. Coffee's in a leg C. I think it's still going to a leg D. It still looks very strong. Uh, coffee could go to, oh, this weekly chart is really good leg B. I believe this is a buy mode for coffee. Um, yeah, over the weekend, over the Thanksgiving weekend, I could tell in my house, all the coffee drinkers, um, although they like to go to George Howell down the street. I guess he's very good, George Howell coffee. Um Anyway, so, uh, yeah, coffee's acting very well, but the monthly chart looks terrible. This is the first decent break to the upside, so the weekly charts improve. Coffee's looking good at 123.30, up $1.30. I think it's going to the 125 and a half to 126 and a quarter area, and then it might rest. Um, I had a couple of other, oh, live cattle, LC live cattle. Where did I put it? Did I type in the wrong place? Yep, there it is. At LC. Yeah, made a peak F. I believe it's a peak F. It's the same pattern we've seen in the others. Live cattle's pulling back. Wouldn't be surprised if it, and I think I said this yesterday, that trades into the 125, 124 area. It's at 125.45 down, 35 cents. And then hogs LH. Um, whoa, big candle yesterday. Three big candles. Big candle yesterday, three days ago. Big candle yesterday, three sessions ago, and another big candle inside bar this time. I think it's trying to have a shakeout. It's trying to do something. So far, it's doing nothing. It's just, you know, I always think of this. Uh, it, it's like a, one of the, like a dog at the at the beach. You know, how a dog goes into the water and then it comes out, and people are just standing around talking. And there's this dog. They don't even see the dog. The next thing, the dog shakes, and its four legs are stuck in the sand, and it's shaking away, and everybody's getting soaking wet, and the dog kind of. Looks up, just walks off as if nothing had happened. Everybody's soaked. That's kind of what we're seeing here. Big shakeout. Does it continue lower at 68 
67.95 up 1.80. If it closes under 6, this continuous contract, under 65.40 tomorrow, that is really bad. If it closes in the next three days, it doesn't close below yesterday's low, but instead it goes over the high of the 29th, Friday, 69.325. That's the first decent turnaround candle it'll have had in the weekly chart for quite some time. Well, I think I've done a lot there. Okay, I want you to talk about uh, the question I had was XLI. XLI, this is the real industrials, or oh, it's closer to the real industrials. Oh, man. Did I not even go? Oh, there it is. So C, D, instant restart. This is a Chapman Wave instant restart right here. Look, there's your D. And within three bars, it makes it breaks to a new high. That becomes E slash A. For now, I'm calling it an A because it goes A, B, C, D, and E. D was already a down, a down arrow. But it failed to look, it held the 14 period moving average, spiked a little higher, and then it went to that inverted V shaped cap. It says, yeah, you might have got a sell signal, but there was one more pop to the upside, and that's it. Peak E, and now it's pulling back sharply. XLI, uh, what a big move from the 80, uh, from the high 82s to 79, 26 today, three points in just a couple of days. But I think I have to call this FG. I don't know. I'm calling this. Uh, uh, let me do this carefully. 77.13, Good. That's why I wanted to do it. My eye said that's a peak, and that's the same as the Dow. Oh, I haven't discussed this. I need to discuss this right now. A, B, C. Not the same as a Dow. This has gone to a leg E in the monthly. Who? The XLI, the S&P Select Spider Industrial Fund, has gone in the monthly chart to a leg E and a possible peak E if there's a, a sharp down. Um, um, well, I'll talk about that in a moment. I just had one question I forgot to get to earlier. Is the XLF? So this is a little unusual. Because once you get to a peak F and then you go to a G, you cannot get an H. There is no H. It goes to a, a brand new A, or you have to go back and see the recycle. So I pointed this out the other day, that it was a chap wave, unconventional, but I, I did it on one of the stocks, but not the actual in, uh, not the uh, ETF. This is a chap wave, unconventional, right here. Flat base restart. So this goes to E slash A, F slash B, and then takes time and goes to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then with the cup formation breaks to a new recovery high and goes to G slash C. For now, I'm just going to call it a C because we know it wasn't a G. And here you get your D. And D is what we look for, for a reversal, possible reversal, and you got that right here. So the XLF has pulled back sharply today. It's down 56 cents. Why? Because the TLT is soaring as rates pull back. And that says, um, besides the other factors involved in the XLF, it does like, it kind of favors when the yields are going higher. That's not the only thing. But it is an important aspect, and that's what you see right here. So the question is, what, what, where is the support level? Well, the support level, as far as I can tell, is first of all, if this 50-period exponential moving average right here at 29. But the green weekly nine-period moving average of 29.25 is going to be important on a closing basis. If it closes below, there's a real good chance you're going to test the 14-period moving average in the weekly chart at 28.89, and that would take you out of your um, that would take you out of your uh, notations. So I just I'm trying to check something. Give me a second here. Yeah, I just want to see. It's important I check it right now. Uh, I'm watching it. I'm following it. I'm following it. Okay. So that's the XLF. Now, so. It's the same thing. 
for instance, our Bank of America that we've had since the 24th screams up to 33.60. And within that context, it's pulling back. It's at 32.62. There's the rectangle. That's what I was really thinking of. So this is what I wanted to show you. Here's the rectangle formation. I drew it in ages ago. That's what I was looking at as a consolidation factor. We'll see if that's going to be. I'll talk a little bit more about it for the final segment. Uh, Dow's down 376. Basel Chapman Tiger Conditions Hour. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. Everyone, don't forget, uh, Steve Rhodes, uh, Tom, uh, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with Tom a little later on. And there is no um, IBD and uh, BIG, that's the Boston Investors Group, meet up at MIT tonight where I was going to be the guest speaker is postponed. The same thing will happen, but a week from tonight. So the 10th of December is when I'll be doing it here in Cambridge, Mass, over at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, room 376. Well, I'm not sure of the room yet. We'll confirm it. So it's not on tonight. Just too much snow. Everything's a little hazardous. All right, let's just do this quickly. Quick, quick question. I want to know about SINA. Um, so... S-I-N-A, sign a core, I can't remember what they do, but it made the dreaded H in the uh, weekly chart. I think it's improving. I think you've got your eye on, on something that could turn into a price. What you really want to see at 38, uh, 35, 13 is that over a period of maybe um, six to eight weeks, it fills this entire gap up to 42. 
Once it does that, that's fantastic. But until it does that, be a little careful. So you're looking for an entry point. Let's look at it together. I like the action now. You know what I'm going to suggest? Because it's strong. It's been strong for three days, even though it hasn't closed over the 14-period um, moving average. So, Alan, why don't you just start a position here at 35.13? Um, the low today is 33.75, so that's a big uh, that's a big stop that you'd have to have. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying start a small position, and even the small position shouldn't have a stop of more than 60 cents. I wouldn't put more than one and a half percent risk in this particular. It's just a feeler position. Why? Because the MACD, you're right, the technicals are starting to improve. I would have preferred to say, let's wait a little bit to test the 33.50 area. But wow, if it actually starts to move up here and, and um, investors see something's moving up when everything's moving down, it can move quickly. So just a little nibble, just to get a feeler position. Okay, a couple of things. The reason why we shorted the Dow is if you look at the, um, look at Caterpillar, my Dow Quartet Caterpillar, look how ugly this is. A uh, huge 148 down to today's low of 138, 10 points in just a short while. Uh, look at IBM's lousy. Look at Triple M, Triple M also big pullback. Look at UTX down, uh, down also 162 down today after peak D. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying it just needs a timeout. And that's the way I'm looking at it. We all short the Dow, we short the SMHs. I, I, I'm expecting some kind of a bounce at some point because the moving averages are about to cross negative if there's still a little room for a bounce.